Today we're gonna to be looking at the Brooklyn Museum figures of speech off-white Air Force Ones. As of right now, there's no set release date, but I do have some information for you guys on how you may be able to get some pairs, and I'm excited to give you guys an early look at this shoe. And if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ, and this is the DNA Show. <laughs> on this channel, I love talking about sneakers and especially giving you guys in-depth early reviews like this. And if you can't tell from the background, we're currently at Untied out here in LA. They got some early pairs available and I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys a nice in-depth look at this sneaker because I know it may look like it's just simple and an all green shoe, but there's definitely a lot of cool details. So with all that being said, before we show too much of the shoe, we got to talk about the history first. We saw the first iteration of this in the Nike Air Force One from the original 10 pack that we saw back in 2017. Shortly after that, we then saw the all white leather version that dropped at ComplexCon. And at that time, the shoe was worth a little bit of money, but nowhere near what it's worth today. Following those two releases, we then had the black pair that came out at the MoMA. It was really hard to get, but again, not a crazy, crazy demand. And the prices weren't as astronomical as they are today. A couple of years later, we then saw more and more collaborations coming from Virgil with Off-White and Jordan Brand and Nike, which then caused more demand behind all of his sneakers, slowly increasing the value. We then saw the blue MCA Air Force One, which I still need to get these in my collection because these things are crazy. And just when we thought we were done with the off-white Air Force Ones in 2019, we then saw the ICA come out in 2021. I missed out on these, but then I finally ended up getting a pair in my collection. And yes, this is a beautiful shoe as well. So now in 2022, after Virgil has passed away, RIP Virgil, a legend in the game, we are now seeing Nike, Jordan Brand, off-white, uh, Louis Vuitton, you name it. There's a lot of collaborations now being produced and we are seeing the green pair set to come out sometime this year. We don't have exact details, but I do have a couple notes from the people because I actually went to the museum a couple weeks ago. I saw the entire exhibit and I talked to some of the employees because they were actually wearing the shoes while they were working. But we'll get into those details a little bit later in the video. I know you guys are anxious to see the shoe, so let's go ahead and start breaking this shoe down. Starting with the bottom of the shoe, you have your classic Air Force One outsole with the light green spark right here. And that's gonna be the same color all throughout the upper. You have a little bit of silver on the swoosh and a little bit of white right here, but the majority of the sneaker is definitely gonna be dominant in that spark green color. Now going to the midsole, classic when it comes to the off-white, you have the air branding right here, in quotes, with the air in white, and then you have your classic rubber hit right here just below that. Now going up to the upper, you got a premium green leather on here as well. These come equipped with a pair of standard green laces to match the upper and an additional pair of black laces to go alongside with these as well. And on the end of the laces, you have shoelace in white on the green laces, and then you have shoelace in green on the black lace. Now, when it comes to the Off-White Air Force One, one of my favorite hits on these in particular is the swoosh. You kind of got that tinfoil vibe right here with the zigzag Frankenstein stitch in black all around that. And then you got a lime green tab right here, classic to the Off-White. Now going to the back end, same thing right here. They did the overlay over the Nike Air branding on the back end on the heel. And then you got your exposed foam around the ankle on the sock liner, all green on the inside of the sock liner. And then you have your off-white branding on the inside of the heels right here, one with the face, one with the hands. Another thing we can't forget to mention as well, on here you have a green mesh tongue with the exposed foam on the top end around that. And then you have a hole through the center of it. And then another iconic hit that we see all the time when it comes to the Air Force Ones, you got your Nike air branding with the off-white right here and the ripstop like material and the white with the green text on here. Another iconic hit when it comes to off-white and collaborations with Nike and Jordan brand is going to be that branding on the inside of the foot. You got your off-white with the Beaverton Oregon and the 1982 on both sides of the feet right here. Definitely something that we see often when it comes to these two and something that we always love to see. Personally, I love the simple touches and I know they're kind of getting repetitive and they're just switching out the colors, but in my opinion, I think they could do the entire rainbow and do a red version, a purple version, a yellow version, all the different colors and have it look as super dope with the whole set of Air Force Ones from the Off-White Collection. That's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Portland, Oregon, so I mean, City of Roses. We could if, Imagine an all red version like this with the silver swoosh on it and the white text on the side, you know what I'm saying? We got a museum too. I mean, Nike is the headquarters there. I mean, it only makes sense, right? And last but not least, when it comes to signature branding as well, you have your classic off-white zip tie right here with that kind of velvet material on the top end around the tab. Now, based off of these pictures right here, as you can see, there are definitely a lot of similarities when it comes to these three sneakers, just switching up the base color of the shoe. And I definitely like that aspect. Obviously, you got the 
the different lace color options when it comes to the white standard color on the blue pair. But besides that, the shoes definitely look very, very similar. But one thing that is very different when it comes to this one is we have a different box. What we've seen in the past when it comes to the Off-White Air Force Ones and the box and the packaging, we typically get the premium sleeve Air Force One box on those. But this one right here is actually more similar to the silver box with the holes in it like we saw on the first set of three off-white dunks that came out before the 50 pack dropped. So in a sense, yes, this is a switch up, but this is something that we also have seen in the past before. And I'm not mad at it because it's always dope seeing these shiny boxes sitting in the collection. So now that you guys have seen some in-depth of the sneaker, let's talk about resale value. How hard is it gonna be? Where are we gonna get the shoe at? And comparing this shoe against the other ones and what people think if it's fire or trash. So typically when it comes to that, I'll always like to post a poll on my story to see how everybody else thinks about the shoes. So if you haven't already, make sure you follow me on IG so you can participate in the polls and see all the results here on my channel. Basically, I asked the people the simple question. Is this shoe fire or is this shoe trash? This is what they said. 79% of the people chose fire and 21% of the people chose trash. And I completely understand it. It is an all green shoe. Now I am a Ducks fan. So that is probably another reason why I might like the shoe a little bit more, but I definitely get it. Not everybody just wants to wear a light spark green shoe like this, just around out in the public, especially with the silver swoosh and all that stuff. It may just be too much for some people, completely get it. But for me, you know, I think the shoe is really dope and definitely it's a fire or a cop or whatever you wanna call it. And something I look forward to adding to my collection someday. And I'm definitely interested to see how you guys feel as well. So make sure you guys are dropping comments down below as we go throughout this video. Now, the next question I ask the people is, which one do you guys like more? Do you like the blue pair, the yellow pair, or the green pair? And this is what they say when it comes to the results. You guys might be shocked, but maybe not. I don't know, let's just show the results. 63% of the people chose the blue pair, 16% of the people chose the yellow pair, and 21% of the people chose the green pair. So as of right now, the green pair is ranking just a little bit higher than the yellow pair, but nowhere near the blue pair. And it looks like that's everybody's favorite as of now. I'm interested to see because we also have rumors of a gray pair coming out in Paris and some other stuff that might be dropping later, which we shall see if anybody knows. But besides that, it's definitely a, a landslide when it comes to the blue pair. I was expecting to see, you know, maybe something around 30 and 40% and stuff a little bit closer to each other, but that's just honestly not even a fair fight. So now when it comes to pricing, this is also something that is very interesting to check out as well. When it comes to the green pair in particular, now I'm a size 13, so take that as well with a grain of salt, do your own research, all the other things, prices are gonna vary depending on size. But basically for a size 13, that shoe's gonna go somewhere around $3,500 to $3,000, depending on who you're buying it for, when you're buying it and all those different things. But that's as of right now before the shoe has actually come out, which again, we'll talk about the drop in a second, but that's pretty high. Now, when it comes to the yellow pair, these are gonna be hitting for somewhere around 1500 bucks in a size 13. And honestly, at the end of the day, if you ask anybody who's not a sneakerhead or even people that are sneakerheads, they're gonna be like, that's still high. But relative to all the other pairs and the collection and the pricing on all the other shoes, this one's gonna be your most affordable option. Now, when it comes to the blue pair, we're looking somewhere around 2500 to $2,000 on this pair and that is also really high as well. Now, with, like I said, there's always a demand when it comes to a sneaker and people are willing to pay more when they get it early. And if you, you know, wait for the shoe to drop, the prices start to go down, they settle, and then over time they start to go back up. So this is kind of the same situation with this. It's settled, this shoe has been out for some years. And again, this is still a $2,000 or a $2,500 sneaker. And at the end of the day, yes, that is still a high price point, but it is crazy to see how this one was a landslide. But then you look at the green pair and these are right now in particular, are selling more than the blue pair and the yellow pair, which is crazy, right? So it's definitely always interesting to see the perspectives of the shoe game and how things go when it comes to polls and people actually spending money and the priority getting on sneakers that are just coming out or people trying to get it early or stuff that came out from the past and how hard is it to get. There's a lot of different factors that may change the opinions and the values of sneakers. So that's always something to take into a perspective because I feel like this is a great example. These are literally the three same shoes, yet just different colors and probably similar quantities when it comes to the releases as well, but the price is vary so much. And then I'm interested to see where the green pair falls, you know, a year or two years from now, if it does go under that, you know, maybe $1,800, or is it gonna go down to $1,200 or $1,500, or is it gonna stay at that $2,000, $2,500, or even go, you know, $3,000, $4,000? We shall see in time. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. So now when it comes to the actual release of this sneaker, I was 
at the museum, like I said earlier, I was there a couple weeks ago and I spoke to the employees that were working there. The people that we saw that were wearing the shoes on the site, those were the security guards and the staff that worked for the museum. They were all under contract. Now the museum is going to be open for the figures of speech from I think it was July until January, sometime around there. You can look up the exact dates, but basically it's pretty much open for around a six month window. And then from there, they're saying that they're supposed to be released this month and we've been hearing things about us getting pushed back and all these other things. I talked to the lady, she told me that they had 200 pairs at the museum, but typically when you do the sneakers app drop, like you have to be at the location and then you hit on the app and then they ship the shoes to your house. And typically it's from another warehouse in a different location, not even actually where that museum is. But I heard that they were dropping 200 pairs at the museum. So there might be a sneakers app type thing that goes from a separate warehouse. And then you have pairs that go actually at the museum and then other pairs that go to different stores and different things like that when it comes to the other retailers that may get the shoes throughout the nation or different places in the world. So there's a lot of different things that are kind of in that gray area up in the air. But one thing that I can guarantee is the Brooklyn Museum is going to be a place to be over, hopefully, you know, you can get lucky and be there at the right time. Or if you know somebody that's gonna tell you the exact drop date or whatever's going on, but that's gonna be the number one guaranteed source that everybody's gonna have their eyeballs on right now. And then like we saw with the yellow pair, that pair dropped at the ICA. And then about a week later or so, I forgot, I don't remember if it was a week later or a couple weeks later, they ended up doing a restock and they put them on sneakers app and drop them to the public so that was another option as well so I think once we see the drop at the actual museum plus the stores that may have got them and all those different things now we're talking about that's gonna set the tone and then from there we'll look out and try to give you guys more information when it comes to the extra restocks that may go to sneakers app or something like that so that's all the details that I have for it right now there are gonna be other retailers and people that do get the shoes as well this is a very limited sneaker there's probably like thousands of pairs not hundreds of thousands of pairs so with that being said there's gonna be a lot of people you know doubling up tripling up different things like that it's gonna be hard to get and that's another reason why you see a crazy price point like that on a sneaker like this so hopefully that gives you guys good information and good detail to look at the shoe the comparisons all the stuff that you guys need to know and again if you are ever in LA make sure you guys stop by untied they always got the heat they always got the bangers every time I get to come through here they always got something dope for me to review for you guys appreciate you as always and use the discount code DNA show that'll get you guys free shipping on all your orders from the untied website I have all their links and everything linked down below in the description all right y'all I'm out Yo, if you enjoyed this video and want to grow your collection or make extra money on the side, I built a VIP mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry. If you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges. So all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section. That will get you set up and into the community. I'm excited to see you guys on the inside.